Frank Close, Antimatter. Embark on an awe-inspiring journey into the world of antimatter with Frank Close's Antimatter. Explore the fundamental aspects of this mirror image of normal matter, set into motion by a mysterious explosion in 1908. Delve into the origins and underlying principles of antimatter, from Paul Dirac's groundbreaking theories to the pioneering experiments conducted at CERN. This book summary unravels the lesser-known complexities of subatomic particles, shedding light on the ongoing research to solve some of the universe's most puzzling questions, like the prevalence of matter over antimatter. Ultimately, it also addresses the practical applications and limitations of harnessing antimatter's tremendous power. Unlocking Antimatter Secrets The Tunguska event, which occurred on June 30, 1908, in a remote region of Siberia is a historic and confounding illustration of the immense power that can be unleashed when antimatter and matter collide. Antimatter is the mirror image of normal matter, a substance made up of inverted atomic structures like antiprotons and positrons, which are necessary for matter's existence. However, when antimatter and matter come into contact with each other, they annihilate in a massive burst of energy. Understanding antimatter unveils the incredible potential for harnessing this cosmic energy. On a summer day in 1908, a massive unexplained explosion erupted in Siberia, creating shockwaves that could be seen from hundreds of kilometers away, and generating enough heat to melt objects even farther away. This phenomenon, dubbed the Tunguska event, illustrated the immense power that could be harnessed from something as elusive and mysterious as antimatter. Antimatter shares a unique relationship with everyday matter, it possesses the same atomic structure but is an inverted version of it. For instance, an antihydrogen atom mirrors a common hydrogen atom, with a negatively charged antiproton at its center and a positively charged positron orbiting it. Einstein's theory of relativity reveals the crucial connection between matter and its enigmatic counterpart. The theory posits that forms of matter are essentially energy captured in a physical form, such as electrons representing pure energy condensed into a particle. While energy is neutral and its forms can change, it cannot be created or destroyed. Therefore, for every particle of matter, an equal and opposite particle of antimatter must exist. This crucial relationship between matter and its inverse ensures the persistence of both forms. However, when they make contact, the two types of particles annihilate one another, unleashing the enormous energy trapped within as a massive gamma-ray burst. Through understanding this potent connection between matter and antimatter, as well as the unimaginable cosmic power that lies at the heart of their simultaneous destruction, we gain a deeper comprehension of the incredible potential these elusive particles hold. Harnessing this cosmic energy could revolutionize our understanding of the universe and, ultimately, make contact with, the gods of creation. Unveiling Antimatter's Existence English physicist Paul Dirac stirred up the scientific community in 1928, questioning the existence of negative energy in introducing his theory behind antimatter. Dirac proposed that a sea of negative energy exists in an empty vacuum and could produce a negative energy electron, a positron, when disturbed by normal energy. While his proposition seemed far-fetched at first, researchers like Carl Anderson, Patrick Blackett, and Giuseppe Acciolini soon found experimental evidence, proving the reality of antimatter and positrons. Although Paul Dirac was known to be a person of few words, he posed a groundbreaking question to the world of physics. He challenged the scientific community to consider the actual existence of negative energy, which intrigued only a handful of scholars, Dirac included. In his paper filled with complex mathematical equations, Dirac made a bold claim that an empty vacuum was in fact a vast, still ocean of negative energy. He went on to suggest that when this sea of negative energy was disturbed by normal energy, it would give birth to a negative energy electron, or a positively charged electron known as a positron. With this bold proclamation, he laid the foundation for the theory of antimatter. Although initially the idea seemed far-fetched, research conducted around the same time by other scientists gradually validated Dirac's theory. 
While Dirac was working on his antimatter hypotheses in England, a California-based researcher named Carl Anderson was diligently examining gamma rays using a cloud chamber, a special tool that enables scientists to study the movement patterns of minuscule particles traversing the air. Anderson anticipated that gamma rays passing through his chamber would dislodge electrons from their respective atoms, creating distinct particle trails that could be observed. However, when Anderson magnetized the cloud chamber, an unexpected event occurred. Despite assuming that every particle trail would bend towards the positive pole of the magnetic field due to their negative charge, some of the trails intriguingly veered towards the negative pole. This could only signify one thing, Anderson had detected positrons. But their origin remained a mystery. Ultimately, this enigma was solved by a duo of researchers, Patrick Blackett and Giuseppe Acchiellini. In 1932, they designed their own cloud chamber experiment, placing copper plates at the top to capture cosmic rays emitted by the sun. As they struck, the rays produced a series of curved trajectories similar to those observed by Anderson. Initially puzzled by their observations, Blackett and Occhialini consulted Dirac, who enlightened them about the actual phenomenon taking place. The cosmic rays were colliding with the copper, generating tiny gamma-ray bursts that disrupted the chamber's energy and produced both electrons and positrons, just as Dirac's intricate equations had foretold. Antimatter was no longer a mere concept but a reality in the world of physics. Unveiling the Subatomic Universe The subatomic world, much more diverse than it initially seems, consists of fermions, particles with mass, and bosons, massless particles. With the development of advanced particle accelerators in the 1950s and 60s, researchers discovered a variety of new particles, including quarks, which make up protons and neutrons. Astonishingly, the concept of antimatter holds true even for these minuscule quarks, further deepening our understanding of the universe that surrounds us. Think of the subatomic world as a stage, with protons, neutrons, and electrons as the famous lead actors. Beneath the spotlight, however, numerous other essential cast members play their part, such as the elusive quarks. Scientific advancements in the 1950s and 60s provided us with the means to uncover these hidden constituents and deepen our understanding of physical reality. Our universe can be divided into two key categories, fermions, particles with mass like protons, neutrons, and electrons, and bosons, massless particles such as photons and gravitons. But, as we dug deeper into this subatomic realm, we discovered even more variety. The study of cosmic rays unveiled exotic particles like the muon and pion, which defied our initial classifications. The game-changing revelation came in 1968 when researchers at Stanford University used a powerful particle accelerator to expose the intricate internal structures of protons. The experiment revealed that each proton is composed of three smaller particles, coined quarks. These fundamental fermions come in multiple forms, including up quarks, positive charge, down quarks, negative charge, and strangely heavy strange quarks. Remarkably, this quark discovery confirmed that antimatter, first proposed by Dirac, extends even to the tiniest particles found in the universe. Quarks have their corresponding antiquarks, and when the two meet, they create a transient particle known as a kaon. This fleeting partnership lasts only a billionth of a second before the quarks annihilate each other, reflecting the fascinating complexity of the universe we inhabit. Unveiling Antimatter's Mysteries Imagine a serene Swiss landscape concealing an underground world of advanced technology and groundbreaking discoveries, welcome to CERN. Here, scientists have achieved the seemingly impossible, controlling antimatter. Despite its propensity to annihilate upon contact with normal matter, researchers have harnessed complex technologies to study this elusive substance. By fine-tuning these methods, scientists are closer to understanding the fundamental mysteries of the universe, such as why matter is abundant while antimatter is so scarce. Delve into the hidden depths beneath Switzerland's picturesque countryside, and you'll find a realm of powerful technology pulsating with potent energy. This is CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, where remarkable tools like the Large Electron-Positron Collider and its formidable successor, 
the Large Hadron Collider, enable scientists to probe the enigmatic world of antimatter. Understanding antimatter calls for overcoming significant obstacles. Given that normal matter is practically omnipresent, antimatter disappears in a flash by annihilating itself upon its encounter with any regular matter. Although producing positrons and antiprotons requires particle collisions at breakneck speeds, the particle traces linger for mere moments. Despite these challenges, controlling antimatter is achievable by employing a series of intricate steps. Particle accelerators first generate proton collisions, which create antiprotons at velocities closely rivaling the speed of light. The antiprotons are then decelerated through a field of frigid electrons before being stored inside a penning trap. This high-tech mechanism deploys an intense magnetic field to secure the antimatter particles, preventing annihilation. CERN scientists utilized this method in 1995 to create and store a single antiproton. A year later, they improved the technique, forming the first antihydrogen atom, albeit one that lasted just a second. Unperturbed, the CERN team persisted in refining the process. By 2011, they could generate pools of antihydrogen that remained stable for several minutes. These experiments' significance lies in their capacity to unlock the properties of antimatter. Through observing its behavior, researchers are edging closer to answering a central question. Why is the universe teeming with matter while antimatter remains so scarce? Unraveling this enigma is the focus of our next exploration. The Matter-Antimatter Mystery Picture a chess game where each move is perfectly mirrored, leading to an empty board. Similarly, matter and antimatter are perfect mirrors of each other, yet our universe is full of matter. This poses a fundamental question, why is matter more prevalent than antimatter? Science is still seeking answers, and the kaon particle and neutrinos offer potential insights. These particles hint at a subtle asymmetry between matter and antimatter, leading to matter's dominance in our universe. Let's ponder a thought experiment. You're playing chess against an equally skilled opponent, and every move you both make is perfectly mirrored. In the end, the board would be empty, right? Now consider this parallel. Just like the mirrored chess moves, matter and antimatter share an apparent symmetry, which should have led to mutual annihilation, leaving nothing. But here we are, in a universe teeming with matter. Why? At their core, matter and antimatter are almost indistinguishable. They share the same behavior, apart from inverse charges. After the Big Bang, both should have either annihilated each other or separated, creating a balanced universe. However, the cosmos seems overwhelmingly dominated by matter, suggesting there's a hidden difference. Enter the kaon particle, an unstable combination of a quark and an antiquark with distinct weights. During the kaon's brief existence, weight in the form of energy oscillates between the quark and antiquark, alternately making the kaon matter or antimatter. Notably, this oscillation isn't balanced. Experiments reveal that the kaon transforms into antimatter for shorter durations than matter, pointing to a potential asymmetry. Neutrinos, minuscule particles that can be either matter or antimatter, also offer valuable clues. Scientists believe that after the Big Bang, particles called majorons decayed, producing both types of neutrinos. It is hypothesized that these majorons might have decayed unevenly, favoring normal neutrinos and steering our universe towards its matter-filled state. While the ultimate answer remains elusive, the kaon particle and neutrinos provide promising leads in our quest to understand the prevalence of matter over antimatter. Antimatter, Power or Peril In 2004, Kenneth Edwards alerted the world to the destructive potential of antimatter, invoking widespread fear about new weaponry. The truth is, however, that practical uses of antimatter remain elusive due to the difficulty in producing, storing, and harnessing this powerful energy source. When Kenneth Edwards took the stage at a NASA conference in 2004, his talk on antimatter shocked the world. As the director of the Air Force's Revolutionary Munitions Team, his description of the energy held within just a billionth of a gram of antimatter, enough to level a city, sparked legitimate concerns about the future of warfare. Thankfully, antimatter-based weapons are far from becoming a reality. 
The reason is simple, practical applications of antimatter remain beyond our reach. Antimatter, when encountering matter, annihilates with colossal energy release. While a nuclear reaction frees only about 1% of an atom's stored energy, matter-antimatter annihilation liberates the entirety of it. Such power could bring about tremendously destructive weapons or enable rapid space travel with unprecedented speeds. Despite its potential, antimatter remains vastly untapped due to its scarcity. As the world is made of matter, we must create antimatter to utilize it, an inefficient, costly, and time-consuming process. With current technology, fabricating just one gram of antimatter would take billions of years and trillions of dollars. Even if we create antimatter, storing it presents another challenge. Particles like antiprotons bear a strong negative charge, causing them to repel each other. Storing more than a tiny amount in current penning trap technology demands almost as much power as the antimatter itself could generate. Undeterred, researchers continue exploring ways to safely store antimatter. The Positronics Research Institute in New Mexico, for example, is investigating the creation of charge-free positronium atoms by pairing a positron and an electron. Manipulating magnetic fields might make such elements more stable and long-lasting. Nevertheless, until a breakthrough occurs, ideas for antimatter engines or weapons must remain on science's drawing boards. The alarms raised by Kenneth Edwards in 2004 still stand, but for now, the power of antimatter remains an unattainable force, stuck between the pages of science fiction and the dreams of scientists. Frank Close's Antimatter provides a gripping exploration of this enigmatic substance, taking readers from theoretical beginnings to the cutting edge of research today. By examining the importance of antimatter in understanding the nature of our universe, the book unravels the myriad complexities involved in probing its elusive properties. While the practical applications of antimatter are still beyond our reach, advances at CERN and research into potential storage techniques provide a fascinating glimpse into what the future may hold. This book summary offers an accessible introduction to the world of antimatter and the ongoing quest to unlock its vast potential, leaving readers eager to learn more about this intriguing area of scientific discovery.